Hello and welcome back to Larry's Prairies, where you learn about animals and learn how to pronounce your teacher's name. So, it's our last day of school, which means it's our last Larry's Prairies. And of course, it's also the beginning of, the, the official beginning of summer now. So, so this week, this past weekend, we had the summer solstice. So we're officially into summer time. It's not just not just the hot weather that we've been having for weeks now. And with summer time, I think the I think the um, the most obvious association that people are interested in is water, whether that be at swimming pools or trips to the beach. Every everyone loves doing going in the water in the summer. So for our la for our final summertime Larry's Ferries, we're going to the aquarium. In, in particular, Adventure Aquarium, which is the, which is the, the largest and only a pub public not-for-profit type of aquarium in New Jersey. It's, a, it's located in Camden, unfortunately, the other, the other end of the state, but still reasonably accessible. It's only two hours drive from Classical Academy if, you, if you're doing it in, in times when there's no traffic problems. Admission fees, $31.99 for an adult, $21.99 for a child, yeah, it's pretty expensive, and there's also going to be a $10 parking fee on top of that, but, but still, it is, the, it is the best aquarium around. It's got a fairly, fairly large collection with a large variety of aquatic and semi-aquatic species, so not only do we have the, the obvious fish and uh, marine invertebrates that you expect to see in, a, in an aquarium. They also, they also have a, a significant, a sizable collection of uh, various reptiles and amphibians. They have penguins. They have a, they have a pair of uh, hippopotamuses. But, uh, and, uh, and, also, also of note, this summer, I think through July 9th, uh, they're they're running a themed ex exhibition about pirates. So if you so if you're interested in in the in the old tales of piracy, yar, this, this is a good time to get to go to go to the aquarium, check, see see the pirates, and also learn about the animals. And. Uh, and though, and of course, though we have a large variety of animals, if you, if you, if you that's the, you're going to the aquarium, I think the the one animal that ev that everyone expects to and wants to see would be a shark. Yes, so let's, so for our animal feature, let's look at sharks. Kingdom, kingdom, animalia. Sharks are still animals. Then, then they're, they're not robots or anything. Phylum predata. We are. We are still dealing with vertebrates, and the class level. So remember, I've told you before that fi that fish are not are no longer considered a, a viable taxonomic category on the on the same level as the as as what as what you learned as elementary school or the other major groupings of vertebrates: uh, rept birds, reptiles, uh, m mammals, amphibians. But fish are not. Are no longer considered a category in that same level, so they they get subdivided into, into uh, two classes. So this time we have chondrichthys, which which are the which are the cartilaginous fish, the one the ones whose skeletons are made of cartilage of of the soft material that other that other vertebrates uh, use as insulating material in their joints. Uh, these these guys have the have the entire skeletons made out of them, and that's a that's a fa that's a fairly small category. So most so your cartilaginous fish are for the most part sharks and rays, and as I announced already, we're dealing we're dealing with sharks. But shark, but of course there are there are many different kinds of sharks, and since we all, at the class level we've already uh, narrowed things down. To all cartilaginous fish, the next level down our taxonomic hierarchy is going to be narrowing further than than just sharks. So, order Erectiloviformes are specifically the carpet sharks, which, which are a group of sharks that that mostly t 
tend, tend to hang out near the ocean floor and that they tend to have patterned skins to, for better camouflage against the floor, hence carpet shark because they're, li because they're lying on the floor, on the, on the sea floor and having patterns like a carpet. So, so, of course, different species of carpet sharks do different things with, 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 it, with this. Uh, se several carpet sharks are, am are ambush hunters that, that lie in wait to snap at larger prey. Others are, others are, sm are smaller hunters that, st that instead of amb ambushing the big prey, go ahead, go ahead and, ju and just gobble up small smaller prey while, you, while using their camouflage to protect them from bigger predators. And of course, some, some carpet sharks don't, don't even bother with any of that. So the whale shark is, is also in, in, the, in the order of the carpet sharks. And, uh, the, and that one you know, is a shark that's, evol that's evolved in the, same, in the same direction as uh, modern whales, even though the whales are mammals and the shark is still a fish. But the whale shark is is the largest of all sharks, and just 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 like a baleen whales, it's a yeah, you know, it's a filter feeder that just swims around uh, filtering filtering off plankton and eat, and eating that rather 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 than hunting for uh, for macroscopic prey. <laughs> but but anyway, so we've got. So we've got a fairly big category and diverse category, even if it's even if the order of erectoloboformes doesn't represent all sharks. So to subdivide it further, we have family Hemiscillidae, which are the bamboo sharks, a, a group of carpet sharks known known for being long, long and skinny with the with elongated tails. So they look they look kind of like a bamboo reed. That's the name. And, to, and today's uh, specific featured animal is Chiloscillium plagiosum, the white-spotted bamboo shark. <laughs> right, so going with the bamboo sharks was a bit of a prank. You were expecting jaws? Well, the Adventure Aquarium does have uh, several shark tanks featuring the featuring the big some of the big sharks. So one of one of the they've got one of the open ocean sharks. They've got They've got hammerheads. Don't think, don't think they actually have a great white like jaws, but they got some big sharks to see. But these aren't there. These, are, these are the white spotted bamboo sharks, which are, which are located in one, in one of the aquarium's several touch tanks. Which, so yes, you get to interact. If you go to the aquarium, you get to interact up close in person with sharks and with several other marine animals. So how you, so how they, so they, they, there you see my. The the, bam, the three of the bamboo sharks and um, also also my my hand for for some scale comparison these are these are pretty small guys as as full grown adults they reach lengths of up to a meter and these and these particular ones aren't 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 quite full grown so you know, so as you can see by the, the hand comparison these are maybe four and a half long so. Well, uh, so, right, so, there's it, there's it. So, they're white shark and bamboo sharks. They're fairly small. They're, they're they are they are bot they are bottom feeders, keeping in line with the carpet shark family tradition. So these, so the so these ones are. Rather than being ambush hunters, are go are just going to eat the stuff that's already on the bottom. Small fish, crabs, and any, anything that sort. They also they also are efficient to try to forest. So all sharks have an have an organ which helps them to de detect prey by by electromagnetic signature. Yeah, it's basic basically a sixth sense in in addition to the. Ba to the basic uh, sight, sm smell, hearing, and so, so forth. But in the ca in the case of the of these of these bamboo sharks, uh, that that electromagnetic sense is more is more tuned to a spot to spotting uh, dead dead animals that ha that have fallen to the sea floor, which the, which the bamboo sharks then help scavenge.
So, despite, be, despite being small and not the awesome Jaws type shark that you're expecting, these are, these are, these are an important part of the ecosystem and face it, what, what else are you going to get a, an opportunity to touch a shark? And if you're going to get that opportunity, I think you'd rather be one of these guys rather than, rather than touching Jaws, that would be scary. <laughs> so, so these the white slide bamboo sharks, they, they live in shallow ocean areas for the most part, often coral reefs. They're mostly living in the, in the Pacific, a bit in the Indian Ocean. So they're, so they're along the southern co coast of Asia, but there's also a population living in the, living in the reefs off Madagascar. So we pro you've probably heard, in, in, you know, if you've paid any attention to in, in, environmental news or a, or I know I've meant I've brought it up in some in some of my classes before that coral reefs are an ecosystem that's generally in da in danger. It's uh, we, corals are, are are significantly harmed by global warming, a lot uh, as well as as well as pollution, uh, 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 mechanical damage just from 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 humans uh, being clumsy uh, when passing through water that. Ha that contains coral reefs. So coral reefs are an ecosystem that's in trouble. But these white spotted bamboo sharks are not in as bad trouble because they don't they don't actually depend on the coral. They're not, they're not, they're not they don't need need coral to make the to make their homes the way that a lot of reef dwellers do. Uh, they just happen to live to live in reef areas. So they put. So the bamboo sharks would would adapt just fine to a, to a, to a doing their thing in shallow waters that didn't actually have reefs in them, and so be, and so because of that they're not quite they're not quite an endangered species the way that a lot of other reef dwellers are. The IUCN lists lists the bamboo the white spotted bamboo sharks as near threatened, which means that there's some that there's some reason to watch out for them but there, but there's but but that's a matter of further study there's it's not considered needful to have any kind of it of a protections directly enacted for, for these guys they're not endangered yet they're also they're also notably bred in captivity for the aquarium industry and by aquarium industry here I don't just mean you know the big zoo type aquariums like adventure aquarium I yeah, I mean aquariums, as in fish t fish tanks, the kinds of things that you might see as decorations in homes and restaurants and stuff. Uh, the, the, ba the bamboo sharks, because because they're fa they're fairly small and they don't and they don't they don't require any any overly specialized conditions. Do just do just fine in salt in saltwater fish tanks, and so there's. There's an industry captive, captively breed, breeding these guys for for sale for sale to aquarium owners. So if you so if you want to own a shark, you can you can get one of these. So great. So we've seen we've seen the sharks, and I've also prom promoted visit, visiting the aquarium to see, to see the sharks. But Camden, it's a two hour drive. That's pretty far away, hard to get to. So, are there easier aquariums to go visit? Yes, there are. Plenty of them, in fact. There's lots of, of, of aquariums around us. So, our, our truly nearby options, there's a new new aquarium that just opened up recently in the, in the also fairly new American Dream Complex over in East Rutherford. Uh, there, so, there's also a... There's also a, cha a chain of for-profit aquariums known as Sea Quest, which has which has a location in Woodbridge, so that so that's just that just down the Parkway, a mere a mere half hour drive if in good traffic, rather than two hours to get all the way out to Camden. So, a very plausible option. For those of you who are mass transit dependent, there's there's the New York City Aquarium, which is located on Coney Island. Very accessible from the subway. 
And if you're going down to the shore anyway, because I know a lot of you will be during the summer, there's, there are several aquariums in various shore towns. So, so people can people can see the aquatic animals as well at, while, while they're at the water. So Point, Point Pleasant and Wildwood both have big aquariums. Uh, so so does Atlantic City, but they have but the Atlantic City Aquarium hasn't yet announced reopening plans after it shut down for COVID. So I suspect fi there might be financial trouble there because uh, there's not really because there's not really any uh, need to, to have things shut down, but anyway, there, there was an aquarium in Atlantic City, there isn't yet. <laughs> so, and I think there's a, a few smaller ones in some other towns, so, there's, so yes, there are lots of opportunities to, vi to visit aquariums and go, and go, and go see, go see the, the wildlife as you, as you enjoy as you enjoy the water on your su on your summer vacations. So, but, so if I if I don't get the opportunity to tell you this in person, have a have a great summer, and I look forward to, to teaching you again next year.